Furries are coming to World of Tanks Blitz, or at least a tank with a furry style. In front of us, we have the G-Sor Fearless, which is obviously a G-Sor that has been reskinned and will be replacing the T-49 Fearless in the near future. I actually think this tank looks really cool. We can obviously see that it does have a furry style camo. We have a fox on the front. You may have noticed the ears twitch a little, which is really, really sick. It's got little claws that are coming off the, the front of the tank as well. I actually really like the design here, and I kind of wish that this was the style for the G-Sor we have in-game, because I'm going to be honest, our G-Sor, I, I don't like the Excalibur camo. I mean, people can let me know their opinions of this camo in the comments, but I think this camo is kind of doofy, if I'm going to be completely real. I like the sword design, it's just, it, I don't know, I don't really like the, the overall aesthetic this vehicle has going for it. In today's video, we are going to be taking a look at the statistics of the G-Sor Fearless. I'll be letting you know my personal opinions on whether I think it's going to be a fun tank to grind, and you should spend your life playing in ratings to get it, or if you should stay very far away. So, well, the first thing I should mention is that it's not an autoloader, which is weird, because the G-Sor is. The Collector G-Sor features a two-shot gun, 440 damage per shot on the Hesh, and it has a 2.5 second intra clip, so it can deal 880 damage in 2.5 seconds. It's fairly accurate, it features pretty solid DPM at just shy of 2,500. In general, the G-Sor is kind of an overpowered tank if you're a decent player because of the gun. It's got great standard pen at 268, it's got good damage per shot even if you're loading the standard at 350. It's flexible, it's got some mobility, it's a great tank. But what we're really going to be comparing the, uh, the Fearless here is to mainly the charioteer because the charioteer features a single shot gun which is more akin to what this vehicle has so let's take a look at what we actually have going for us first of all we have the dpm 2768 that's pretty good damage per minute if we make our way over to the charioteer you can see i fully equip this tank in terms of food and we have our uh, equipment loaded out here and in terms of dpm with the same equipment being calibrated we're sitting at uh 2300 on the charioteer that is a massive dpm disadvantage and it's definitely going to be noticeable when you're driving this tank however something you should keep in mind is that this vehicle gains 90 damage per shot when loading high explosive where if we make our way to the uh, gsor fearless here it's only going from 330 to 380 which is a 50 damage increase so you're gaining almost double the alpha when loading high explosive with the charioteer versus the G-Sword Defender. That's something to keep in mind. You're going to notice a bit of a DPM evening out when loading high explosive. How much DPM does this tank have with the Hesh? Well, it is around 3,200, which is actually pretty good. It, it kind of reminds me of like a Vickers light gun if you just gave it a lot of high explosive penetration. So this vehicle features AP standard and 251 mils of pen, and this is with calibrated activated as we can see. So honestly, pretty good pen. Not nearly as good as the tech or the uh, collector g sor though, which has, as we said, 268 mils. The tank features 184 mils of high explosive pen, so five less than the Charioteer, the same as the G-Sor, which is all right. And as we said, 330 damage per shot on the standard and 380 on the premium. It's definitely a big disappointment on the premium damage. I, I gotta be honest, because the standard's only 20 less than the standard of the G-Sor or the Charioteer of 350. But the Hesh is not. The Hesh would have been 420 if it was only 20 less. But as we can see, it's quite a bit less. And that's a big disadvantage. It's 60 alpha difference between the two high explosive shells and not 20. So I, I do think Wargaming definitely uh, limited this tank's capabilities when it comes to the damage output. You're really not gaining that much when you're loading the high explosive. Aiming time as well, holy bad. 4.8 seconds of aiming time? What am I looking at there? The Charioteer has 4.4 seconds of aiming time, and that's without even equipping it. I mean, if you're running, you know, if we fully equip this tank really quickly, and we just get all these slots here, your aiming time is actually 3.6. So, um, oh wait, no, I know why the aiming time is so bad, because, uh, my friend who equipped the tank, Asen, who's a bit of a doofus, put on Supercharger and Refined Gun. And with those two values swapped, you're looking probably around 3.8 seconds of aiming time. To be fair, that's still bad. This tank's 3.6, which is already pretty pretty mediocre. 3.8 is pretty dang awful, especially because the G-Sor has a fairly quick aiming time at 3.2 seconds. So, 
depending on how this vehicle's on movement dispersion is, it could definitely affect the enjoyment level of this tank. Gun depression, 8 degrees, pretty average. Uh, dispersion's pretty close to what you would expect. And in terms of mobility, well, the vehicle does feature super speed boost, as we can see, which is quite nice, and it's going to allow the tank to accelerate very fast, which will be very enjoyable. Uh, the tank has a top speed of 44 and a reverse of 16, has the exact same power to weight as the GSOR collector, and it has worse terrain resistances, especially on medium terrain. That sucks, because the GSOR is already quite slow, so the Fearless variant, oh boy, if you're not having that super speed boost activated, it's going to be pretty bad in terms of mobility. Nice thing is that this is a tank destroyer after all, and you're not incredibly reliant on the mobility, but uh, it's still a little disappointing that this tank is following suit the same problems I have with the GSOR collector, which is just that it's not the fastest tank, which can make it a little unenjoyable and awkward in certain situations. Camo-wise, the tank is really good, 77% while stationary. It is a turreted vehicle after all, so it's very easy to use stationary as well. Armor is exactly the same as the GSOR, which is not good. It means that you're going to be penned by high explosive in the lower plates quite easily, especially from really any 120 millimeter cannons. The turret is quite easy to pen with high explosive. Armor on this vehicle is going to be quite non-existent, which will suck for any of you that obviously are trying to hope you can get some bounces. In general, if we are to compare the GSOR to the Charioteer, what can I say? Well, the Charioteer still has less DPM. It's 2300, and even loading high explosive, you're still only looking at around 27, 2800 DPM in the Charioteer, where it's upwards of 3200 with the GSOR Fearless. That's a lot of damage per minute, but obviously this tank does have 60 more damage per shot with the Hesh, so that is a big advantage on this vehicle. Gun depression-wise, this is better. Mobility-wise, this tank reaches a higher top speed, has a much better power to weight, and this tank also features Spall Liner, and super speed boost. So it has a lot of similar capabilities. In fact, small liner, I would say, is even better to have. So if we're really comparing the GSOR to the Charioteer, I think both of them look pretty strong. I actually really like the Charioteer on the tech tree, to be honest. I think it's a really fun tank to play. I like the gun. I think it's super dangerous. So I'm actually quite excited to see how this vehicle ends up playing. It almost looks to be like a tier 8 Cobra. I don't think this is going to be as broken as the OG Charioteer, because the OG Charioteer had upwards of 36, 3700 DPM. It was literally an FV4202 gun on a tier 8. This is not the case. This is less alpha, it's less dangerous. But I still think this is going to be a really nasty vehicle to go up against. I think its gun's going to be really dangerous and everything like that. But at the end of the day, the reason why I don't think this tank's going to really be too much of an issue is because we already have the Death Star in Tier 8. This tank features solid DPM at 2,600, which is already crazy, especially when you realize this tank is 180 mils of high explosive pen and deals 370 damage per shot. That's only 10 less than the GSOR Fearless, and it has a 3-shell clip with a 2.2 second intra clip. This tank honestly wipes the floor in terms of capabilities to the GSOR. So uh, if you want my opinion, I mean, if you really want the GSOR Fearless just because you like the style or you just want to get the next Fearless tank, it looks pretty good. But in terms of capabilities, I think you're going to be a lot better off getting your hands on something like a Death Star. Honestly, I also think the Collector Double Shot variant is still going to be stronger. But let me know in the comments what you guys think. Let me know if you agree. Let me know if you disagree. And I'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.